Uh, hello, good afternoon. Uh, welcome to the Witness Without Identity. Today I want to talk about Jimmy Dore and uh, the fight with Jenk Yoger. Um, the fight continue. Um, and I think it's it's pretty interesting because those guys were good friends. So <laughs> I, you guys might laugh at this a little bit because I'm going to show you two videos. I'm going to show you a video of Jenk saying, I think the video that said that Jenk saying that, oh, he loves Jimmy Dore. All right, so Jimmy Dore uh, has uh, exited the building, and he, I think that a lot of you probably have seen his video talking about that. And uh, and he used to host Progressive Progressive, this show, along with the Jimmy Dore show. Uh, and so, uh, first thing I'd like to say is, I love Jimmy Dore, uh, and <laughs> I always have, and I hope that I always will. And and so it, it's um, so, so you see that Jenk just said he loved Jimmy Dore. So now we're gonna go to the other video where Jimmy Dore start attack like Jenk attacked Jimmy Dore on Twitter, and Jimmy Dore is talking about it in a very angry way. And now it, it looks like uh, those guys are no longer friends. I mean, it, it's 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 derailing. The relationship is derailing very fast, and they don't know how to make it clean. You know, and that's very dangerous. All right. So look at the the other video now. You know we're pushing this hashtag force the vote and there's been a lot of bad faith attacks and a lot of bullshit excuses why not to do it. Mark Pocan was the first one who gave a litany of ridiculous ideas. He said it doesn't even work, you can't do it, all this stuff. And of course he's wrong, he was just lying because they don't want to do it. So that was Mark Pocan, he was the co-chair of the caucus. And then AOC engaged Justin Jackson uh, on Twitter and so that's why we, we went from going after aiming to mark pokan and then we went after aoc we started aiming our uh, vitriol at aoc because she was now engaging us she wasn't engaging us directly she was engaging us through a surrogate known as justin jackson the la chargers running back right so all the arguments i was making he made to her and destroyed her she thought he was going to go away he didn't so n now uh I, I i what when i got this going i I uh, Jenk Uger was on board with it. So now there's a lot of bad faith attacks that Jenk Uger has picked up from AOC and other people and is just forwarding them. So at first, when this idea, before it was popular, before he thought it would take off, he was for it. He said, Jimmy is making a constructive effort to actually get vote on Medicare for all and to unite progressives despite our differences. I love that. Even if you don't think it's the perfect way to do it, you have to agree. We all have to push progressive legislators to get this introduced. So that's what he said on December 7th, before, before it took off. He, he, uh, he also said 53% of Americans want Medicare for all, even after overwhelming propaganda by national media, Republicans, and Democratic leadership against it. 87% of Democratic voters want it, and Democrats won't even vote on it. Anyone who tells you Medicare for all is unpopular is an unmitigated liar. So he seems to be upset on December 7th that they won't even vote on it. So he's on the right side of the issue there. I don't, I, so he was. So he was on the right side of the issue. So that's December 7th. So I don't know what happened in 13 days later. He totally flips the script. Jenk, he totally goes out of his mind, starts making up bogus arguments against it. Even worse, even lamer arguments than AOC. Like, here's one of them. Here's the big one he was pushing. You ready? He says, challenging progressives to defy Democratic leadership and force a floor vote on Medicare for all is so obvious. I've been pushing for it for two years. Oh, you have? How's that pressure campaign going for you, Jenk? You got five million subscribers. You weren't able to move the needle an inch. And now that we are, he tells to gaslight you about it. The next sentence is a gaslight. He goes, the question is what vote you push on. The one where you hand the speaker position to GOP without any plan is not the one. Now, that's not true. That doesn't happen. That's a scare tactic. And I can't believe Jenk Uger doesn't know that because it's fucking December 20th. This isn't December 7th. This is December 20th. And it's been explained to him many, many times. And he's still saying this. So that's a guy, that's a bad faith attack. That's a guy trying to kneecap the moment. And I don't, I, you, you tell me why. Some people say he's taking more corporate money to do it. Some people say it's, he's, he's, he's jealous that it's not his idea. And somebody who was on his show uh, has an idea that's much bigger than him. I don't know why is he doing this, but it's crazy.
He knows that's not true. Here's Ryan Grimm to tell you how it happens. That, that You don't lose the speakership to the GOP. That doesn't happen. Why would he do this? Why the fuck would he do this? Here's, here's Ryan Grimm to explain to you how it works. If she, so she has to go to this, the House floor and she has to get 218 votes. Right. And by the way, Republicans aren't going to. By the way, when is a better time for this? When Pelosi has nothing to lose? When would be a better time to push for a Medicare for all vote? When Pelosi has absolutely nothing to lose? And so you're sure she won't do it? Here's Ryan Grimm. If she, so she has to go to this, the House floor and she has to get 218 votes. Right. And Republicans aren't going to vote for her. And so if she can't get 218 Democrats, then there's no speaker. Right. And then it kicks back to the caucus and then they and then it's chaos. And then a whole bunch of people can run and then somebody will emerge. Uh, somebody would emerge from that process who would then all, then also need to unify the party and say we need 218 votes um, to get to the to the House floor. So uh, she's sort of she won it in the caucus, but she she has to get through the, the process because right. she needs a full on. Majority, majority of 218. And the worry is that if they withhold their vote, she doesn't become, and then it goes back and they pick someone who's even further to the right of her, right? That's what people are. That's that's what people say. That's hard that, to get uh, someone further to the right of Nancy Pelosi, isn't it? Come, <laughs> come on. You, well, you, you would think so. <laughs> so Cenk is 100,000% wrong about that. You don't, The speakership doesn't go to the GOP. And if he doesn't know that, that's almost worse. That's almost worse. You have such a big platform. This is such a big issue. You have no idea how to leverage power against Nancy Pelosi, and you've been talking about it for two years, and you don't have the slightest idea how it works, and you're going to come out and smear a guy who's pu pushing for it? Like you've been smearing me on Twitter? That's what you're going to do, Jenk? Shame on you. Shame on you. You don't even know the facts. This is complete garbage. That's complete garbage. And I've asked him to correct it and he won't. Many people have asked him to correct it and he won't. He came up with a new lie. Jake Buger's, uh, he's untethered now. I've seen this happen to him before. And he never admits when he's wrong. And that's who he is. He was a thousand percent wrong on Russiagate. He's a thousand percent wrong on this. And Ryan Grimm, just explain it to you. And here, I'll, I'll, I'll go to the Congressional Research Service, which he won't do. He won't do it. He's not going to do his research. Jack Uger has no idea how this process works, and he can't stop trying to derail it. Hey, how many votes must a candidate receive to be elected speaker? The longstanding practice of the House is that electing a speaker requires a numer numerical majority of the votes. Cast by the members for a person by name. So if they if they don't vote for Nancy Pelosi, that doesn't go to the GOP. Because that the GOP guy didn't get a majority of the votes. That's not how it works. What happens if no member receives sufficient votes? If no candidate receives the requisite majority of the votes cast, the roll call is repeated. No restrictions are imposed on who may receive votes. For instance, no candidate can be eliminated, blah, blah. So it does, that's not how it works. That's not how it works, Cenk. Thousand percent wrong. He's screaming. He's wrong and loud about it while he's trying to block Medicare for all. Why the fuck is he doing that? Why? In the, he's got a better fight later? What, what fight is that? And when is it supposed to happen, Cenk? What the fuck is he doing? Is he looking for another round of funding from his Clinton donors? Is that what this is? There was no, he says this, this is nowhere near true before Jimmy Dore jumped in with a half-baked plan. It's a half-baked plan because I don't know if you remember, he said it was a constructed effort that actually to get a vote on it. And then 13 days later, now it's a half-baked plan. What changed, Cenk? It caught on? It actually could work? You didn't expect it to actually catch on and everybody get behind it? And now for some reason, 
that's pretty obvious to me. You don't want to do it. And you're and these are bogus reasons. So now so now it's a half baked plan. OK, I, I'll, you know, I was half baked when I came up with it, but that's got <laughs> nothing to do with this. I think of that, too. To plan to hand the GOP leaders to speaker position. He's still doing it. He's still lying. Why is he doing that? Ask Cenk why he's lying. Go tweet at him. Ask Cenk why he's lying. Go to their website. Why is Cenk lying? What is, what is he getting out of this? Who's he working for? Who is Cenk working for? Why are you trying to derail this moment? <clears throat> Cenk is being revealed to be a kneecapper of this moment. Do you want Medicare for all vote? Nine, almost 90% of his viewers do. Yet he'll still lie. These are fucking straight up lies. Now it's a half-baked and enhanced the speakership to the... No, it doesn't. It doesn't do any of those things. It's unfortunate. So you see that Jimmy Dore here is talking about Jenk and he's like... He's totally uh, going after Jenk and the part that caught my eyes was the part when Jimmy Dore said that... Uh, Jake has an idea that like he hates it because he finally finds something that is bigger than him so basically Jimmy Dore came out with the idea first and Jake is just jealous and he oh Jimmy Dore went all in he said that is 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 Jake why is Jake against Medicare for all is he receiving money Ooh, oh my god he's, he's really attacking Jake because there's there's a rumor that Jake took money from the clinton so he's like oh my god this is like big accusation this is getting nasty but he's not attacking anna because anna is kind of salty anna Kasparian, and anna goes after goes after jimmy also but that would be interesting but um maybe it's a woman thing yeah i understand that uh, it's no problem but like uh so Eddie, 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 at the end jimmy Dore acts like you know why don't you guys go and ask jank like why is he doing this like like email him harass him ask him why are you trying to break a kneecap the medicare for all <laughs> oh my god <laughs> jake 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 jimmy door says i mean i don't mean to laugh at this because it's it's a, we need medicare for all. i understand it's a tragedy but it's kind of funny how they're fighting because they were a good friend jake you have to understand that my idea is a little bit bigger than you <laughs> sorry to break your ego and it's kind of like what that's what jimmy Doe is saying so um jank is basically fighting on twitter and saying that that's a bad idea because you're gonna hand it over to the gop so basically th there's a difference on the left i don't know if you guys agree with me there's two lefties there's a lefty that's that that, that hits the gop those are the jank and anna they hit they hit the republican they hit the uh, donald trump they take his awful they think it's the worst that's the the other left people that think that they don't see the difference between the democrat and the republican they think that they are the, the same the same bs so jimmy Dore, i think because of all the freaking way that nancy pelosi has treat, treated the progressive jimmy door is actually willing to throw nancy pelosi under the bus and pick up a gop if that happened but he said that it's not gonna happen but there's a possibility that might happen because that's the threat the threat is that we don't vote for 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 nancy pelosi and the gop uh, uh republican can get in and then, then the nancy Pelosi loses her seat that's the threat you know so basically that's the same threat that they did to biden we're not going to vote for biden the progressive we, we might as well get trump because we think we, they are the same and then anyway we think this will be a remedy for you for you to remember not to mess with us that's basically what the message is be careful and i understand I, i'm not uh, i'm not saying it's a bad idea i'm not gonna say it's a bad idea but like uh yeah like i, I think we need to calm down you know i need, i think the left needs to calm down we need to listen to each other more carefully and we need to start accusing and cursing each other i think what's going on all the time in discussion because i think that's 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 the reason of my channel by the way the channel that i have is all about that it's witnessing without identity right what does that, that mean? That means that we try not to bring our identity into the conversation. Jimmy Dore attacks, uh, a Jake attacks Jimmy Dore, and Jimmy Dore felt like his identity is threatened. So he's, he's, defend, he's, he's defending it, full throttle. 
and he's saying bad things about junk. I'm not like you. I'm not taking money from corporate people. And if you're a real progressive, why are you not uh, uh, pushing for this? And Jake is not, you know, you know. So he's doing those things. So they, uh, each, both guys are trying to identify their identity. Like, are they true progressive? Who's the, oh, is it Jimmy Dore? Is it Jake? So the fight actually became personal, guys. It became personal, and that is a waste of time because we are not focusing on the idea and trying to see what Jimmy Dore is saying and be calm about it and talk about it in a very careful way. That's what I want to see. That's what this channel is about. The country is divided. We need to talk calmly about a, a complex situation like this. We don't need to attack. We don't need to say that somebody is not a real progressive or somebody is, a, is an asset. Somebody has... A, and I also think that Jimmy Dore can learn from this. Because Jimmy Dore also does have a little bit of like salt and bite in his attack against AOC. And many people are not going to feel you, Jimmy. I mean, it's just the way it is. We're not telling you not to force the vote. I, I, I think we should force the vote. I think we should, the, the, the progressive should hold on to their vote. But I'm, I don't have to call AOC a, a liar, a crook. I don't have to say that. AOC, hold on your vote. That's what you have to say. Oh, AOC, just hold on to your vote. But I don't have to call you a liar or you're, 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 you're a hypocrite, you're, you're this. Jimmy Dog goes full throttle on, on the insult. And that removes people away from you when you talk like that. Because you make it personal. You're attacking per uh, AOC personally. So what do you think she's going to do? She actually think it's the opposite now. Because you attack her personally that way. You think, oh, now he's going to say, oh, Daddy Jimmy, I think I agree with you. I'm going to do what you tell me. No. So in a way, I understand what some people are saying. I am for forcing the vote. But that kind of salty language, that viper, that ver venom can mess up with somebody's ego. And they might do the exact opposite. Because they want to show you that you are wrong. So you don't want to get to that level. So you have to be careful. So I think Jimmy has a, a great idea to push the, the, the movement forward. But I also think that, you know, he could do a better job with the language. That's what I think. Please subscribe to my channel, guys. Thank you.